What prompted your interest in bees, Wolfgang? <laughs> Well, I've been interested and in, in aware of how important bees are for a long time. They're, uh, they're responsible for 30% of all the food that we eat, and you can almost see them as uh, sentinels of the planet. They haven't evolved for over 120 million years. And uh, so you can almost see like the, the hive itself, like the beehive, as a, as a barometer for, for the health of the planet. The healthier the beehive, the healthier the planet. Uh, sadly, the reverse is true these days. So if we move on to the realisation yeah. of the hive, why did you use mill-finished aluminium for this structure? I was very keen to be as sustainable as, 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 as possible and, and, and in a way so, to be as honest as possible, to, to let the, uh, the materials patternate naturally in time. So I was quite surprised we actually used aluminium at first. My first choice, I was thinking it would be stainless steel. At first, the, the expo was only going to last for six months. So even though I was really keen that the hive, the sculpture, which we now would have a second life, uh, if it didn't, I was really keen that the actual aluminium could be recycled really, really simply. Uh, but again, it would have been in some ways easier to have welded everything on sort of site. It would have been a lot cheaper, a lot, a lot quicker. But that would have meant it wouldn't have had a, had a second life. So, so these two things were really important to me right at the beginning. So you knew what's going to happen to it after, after the expo. Do you think aluminium can be described as sympathetic and powerful? I think it can. Even like a, like a day like today, I think I think what it what it can do, it feels like it's part of nature. I mean, it's, it's very much a, a, an intervention in this landscape, but it depends how you use it. And because it's visually porous, it seems to kind of sit sympath sympathetically within the, within the landscape. So was collaboration key in the, the design and realization of the hive? Uh, yeah, collaboration was essential. I mean, uh, I mean to get this project together. I mean, there was myself, there was BDP Architects and Landscape Architects, Tristan Simmons Studio, uh, Dr. Martin Benchik. Uh, there was the musicians. So, in, in terms of the, the creative team, which I kind of brought together, there might have been 10, 15 kind of creatives. And then there was the, the engineers, there was the fabricators, there was probably 250, 300 people worked on this, this project. Could you have done it without digital design and digital fabrication? No, no, I mean... But you started with a pencil sketch, is that right? Yeah, so, yeah, so like all my sculptures here, yeah, they start with, a, with an idea, the concept, and then I, uh, yeah, I sketch it, which kind of gives it its feel, its atmosphere. Uh, when I first set up my studio, my practice in Nottingham 30 years ago. I used to make all the sculptures myself, so I understand fabrication, know how things are kind of made. But as the sculptures have become larger, more complex, it's been really essential that I work with structural engineers right at the beginning to get this harmony between form and meaning and, and, and sort of structure. Comparing the Milan Expo and the setting here at, at Q, which do you think is the better context for your pavilion? That's, that's, that's a good question. I, I think at, at first I was so happy that it was in, in Milan, just the fact that we'd kind of managed to get it there again, and, again, again, and, and it, against all the odds. So it was an amazing feat, not just for me, but I think just to kind of bring art, architecture, landscape, science, music, to kind of bring all these things together. And, and represent the UK. Okay, yeah, yeah. And, and, and one simple idea. So, so, so for me, that, that was an incredible achievement. Uh, and, and what was really lovely in Milan was the sky. It was, it was fantastic. You had this incredible blue sky. But here, you're at Kew, it doesn't look much different. And, but one of the things which I think is, is possibly better here at, at Kew is that we knew what the context would be. Whereas in Milan, I had no idea who our neighbours would be. The only constant, the only context I did know would be the sky. Whereas here, uh, uh, we remodelled the whole of the earth so, so we, we kind of knew what it would look like with the vantage points. So here at Kew you have this whole borrowed landscape, this kind of peripheral vision. So you look through the sculpture itself, it kind of frames nature. So I think in a, in a lot of ways it's probably more successful here at Kew. It, it kind of feels that, that it belongs here. I mean we've got uh, the sounds that you're hearing at the moment uh, they're all being triggered by a live beehive here in Kew, whereas in Milan uh, the beehive was in Nottingham and everything was sent via the internet. So, uh, so it, it does feel really grounded here and what I really like about it here is that it, 
it, it kind of uh, presents itself quite subtly, even though it's 70 meters tall. Uh, you get little glimpses of it through the trees and it'll change during the seasons. Now the leaves are starting to go, it'll look very different. The experience will be very different in the winter as it would be in the summer. So uh, you know, I'm so happy it's had a second life. I think it's the only UK pavilion that's ever actually had a proper second life. I think they've all been uh, scrapped or recycled. So, so for me, that's, 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 we, we did what we really yeah, set so out to achieve. a real case study of design for disassembly yeah, and exactly. reassembly. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Oh, I thought it was a triumph. Um, absolutely fantastic. It seems like it's come home, really. It's a kind of perfect location for, for that project. And, um, you know, I think it's, it's kind of completely immersive experientially, and yet it's got a very serious message um, and very beautiful. It's lovely to see such an open, dynamic, and in a sense kind of loose structure in the gardens that's actually quite plant-like in a funny kind of way. And it, it is also reminiscent of, of a hive in, in, in another way, as you can see all those sort of hexagonal patterns coming together. But I think it's, a, it's an extraordinary experience. I, I think sometimes when architecture really works well, it is almost a spiritual experience to be in that space. And I certainly felt that today.